Welcome back, guys. It's episode 75, oh my god, of the Brothers Geek Out podcast. We're here with G-Man from Singapore. How's it going, bro? You all right? What's happening, people? Uh, yeah, good, bro. Good. How's everything going, man? With you? Yeah, good. As you can see, I'm painting. I'm in the new house. I'm uh, getting the last bit sorted. We're going to get flooring down soon and then probably move in in about a week or two. So, yeah, just prepping, man. Just trying to get the place safe and easy so that when Alara said that it's not... No heavy work to be done. There's always going to be little bits and pieces. As you can see, we installed a Bangladeshi fan. We had to do it. That's it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, the thing is about UK, yeah? We're prepared for the winter, but when you were getting that recently, we've been getting those hot, yeah. really hot kind of summers or days or whatever. We're not prepared for that, man. That's why there's no air con and you've got these basic fans that don't that just push out hot air and whatnot. Yeah, um, no. I don't know, man. With this global global uh, climate and whatnot, what's it called? Global 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 what's warming. Called? Anyway, global warming. Jesus, man, I'm going blank. I'm going blank. Sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, with all this and the heat, UK is gonna have to kind of uh, accommodate for the heat. Get aircon and shit. No, we on. don't. I mean, this is uh, Shanaz's idea because she was like, "Oh, your dad's got it in the front room. It's a lifesaver because during the summer, everybody just chills together in the front room. It's quite nice because we've got mm. a fan there." And you don't have to have like any nice. floor standing fans in the room as well in case you buckle on it and shit. So we were like, what do we do? So we thought we might as well do it, man. It's, I think it's useful. I think it adds value. I think it, I don't know. It's just convenience, I suppose. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Future ba- future Bat Cave, Geek Cave. Another, another headquarters coming up soon, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'll show you that room in a bit. I'll do a little tour around the house. Uh, yeah, cool, man. But yeah, just say, I'm, I'm going to be painting while I do this podcast. Well, actually, a little break, man, because I'm shattered already. But that's why I haven't had the chance to do much geeky stuff, to be honest, this week. Like, finish off last bits of work. I'm off for a week, so just get this house ready, man. That's the main, that's the main mission. Mm, that is the mission, bro. That's the mission. Almost completed. Just got to mm. keep going. What about yourself, man? Nothing much, bro. Just been working. It's been super busy at work. Uh, uh, just sorting out loads of stuff. Training as hard as I can without getting injuries, but I'm still injured as always. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Just, just been kind of, um, just I don't know, just living life and enjoying it and whatnot um, out here. Just enjoying it as much as I can, bro. The life experiences and whatnot. Uh, um, what did I book? Oh, I booked tickets to F1, bro. I'm not really an F1 fan, but I booked it because of Hans Zimmer, bro. Wow. He's going to be performing. That's and I was like, man, what? once in a lifetime opportunity to see Hans Zimmer perform. Um, unfortunately, it was within the F1 ticket, so I had to buy the whole package and whatnot. But with that, bro, I mean, I'm getting Hans Zimmer. Yep. F1 and also the Red Hot Chili Peppers, bro. Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's yeah. fucking epic. Now, I, I was speaking to some mates today at the pub while watching the UFC, and like none of them knew who Hans Zimmer was. So they're all laughing at me and shit. It's like, gee, maybe you should start off with Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I was like, you know what? I can't even lie to you, look, man. Like, the fact is, I'm going for Hans Zimmer. Like, Chili yeah. Peppers, yes, they're amazing, but I'm going there for Hans Zimmer. Um, but no, listen, I'm saying it now. If he, I don't think he does, because all his live concerts, I don't know why he does it, but he does. But he doesn't play Last Summer Night soundtrack. Now, if he plays that, I'm fucking crying. I don't give a shit. I'm <laughs> hoping that maybe because he's in Asia, you know, he'll just play it for the. Maybe I don't know if that's a racist thing or what. But please, Hunt <laughs> Zimmer, man. If he plays Last Summer Night, it's like an hour and 30 minutes of just the, the concert, of his concert. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm, bro, I'm so looking forward to it. I'm sure he's going to play Intercell. I'm sure he's going to play Time and and uh, Dark Knight, possibly. And Oh, my God, bro. Why just don't you get in contact with his uh, PR company that are doing it and make sure they request... Why don't you request last summer? Wait, wait. How do I do this? What do you mean? So, the company that are putting the F1 together, you should get in contact with them to see if they... Uh, if the PR company is looking after Harlan Zimmer... And uh, request a couple of tracks. Okay, I've got an email for the, 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 the F1 whatever. So maybe I will ask him and say, look, can you put me in touch with the PR company with Hans Zimmer? I really want to request the track. Oh, no, let me try it. Yeah, give that a go, man. I think that'd be quite interesting. 
Ah, uh, bro, I, ah, uh, can't. Okay, if he doesn't play it, still like Hans Zimmer, bro. Like again, a lot of people might not know who he is, and a lot some people do, but. Ah, uh, oh, come on, man! Like I, I'm so I can't wait. I, bro, I've only been to one concert in my life. We went that Lincoln Park one, you like what that? That, what's that? Twelve years, fifteen years ago, or whatever. Yeah. And um, that was amazing. You know, I'm not really a big concert goer, um, especially with the music today. I'm not really a big fan of much artists and whatnot. It'll be old school hip hop if I ever went, if I, if, if I went, ever went to one, like an Immortal Techniques or yeah. Dead Prez or something like that. But. Yeah, no. Uh, all the entertainers and whatnot like that are now Hans Zimmer, man, for me, man, I'm happy to pay the money to go and see him perform. So yeah, well, I mean, F1 is going to be an experience as well. It's not like F1's in every country in the world. That's you know, it's a selected con- um, countries that they race in and whatnot, and and, and be a part of the track. So that's going to be a great experience from itself. I have no idea and no knowledge on F1, but um, you know, it should, should be awesome. Yeah, listening to those cars and. Those engines, we used to be in, like, you know, back in the days when we had the Nova and whatnot, I was into cars, you know, I used to love all that shit, just yeah. the way the engine would sound, or the way the carburetor would sound, I remember that, the, the 1.3 Nova, when you know, we wanted to get, like, double twin cam, t- twin carbs, yeah. and all that sort of stuff, uh, the carburetor and whatnot, I, I just, I can't remember the exact same things that we used to do to it, but I remember we used to tear the engine apart, like, pull out the, the, the pistons or whatever, <laughs> get, like, a flow through exhaust, um, Four branch manifold, all that shit. Remember that stuff, bloody I hell. Remember, um, I so remember. you know, maybe, maybe that will bring back a lot of ra- days from from our Nova street yeah. racing fun day. It but um, be, yeah, no, I'm looking for it's, it's, it's a Singapore experience. Why not, man? Hans Zimmer, everything. It's gonna be a great day. I can't wait. That's coming up in September, September 23rd or something like that. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that, man. It's not too long away, is it? Mm-mm. About a month away, man. That that week, I fly over to Thailand and spend six weeks just training in uh, Muay Thai. So I'm looking forward to that too, man. Six weeks. Mhm. Mm. Six days. Sorry, six days. Bloody hell. I was gonna say. Uh, six days. No, no, I've, I've got it all lost in my head, bro. Six days in Bangkok, uh, literally training. Like join the gym, just training. Like sleep early. Wake up early, just train with the tires, man. Uh, I, it, it's a dream come true because it's, it's kind of weird, but I've no, it's not weird, but I've always wanted to do this since I've come to Asia and I haven't done it. So yeah. you know, I'm so looking forward to to just getting out there and just training the way they do and just trying to learn as much as possible, just brush up on my technique and all that sort of stuff, man. So yeah, no, man, it, uh, you know, some good experiences coming up. So I'm looking forward to it. No, that should be good, man. Absolutely good. Make sure yeah. you're filming everything so we all get to see what's happening, bro. Say that again, sorry? So make sure you're filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll try and do as much as possible, man. I'll try and film as much as possible. Um, but I will, yeah. But other than that, bro, same, same. I went to cinema yesterday. Finally got a chance to watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, um, to tell give us, a non-spoiler review. What's that, sorry? Tell us, bro. Tell us about it. Non-spoiler review, but it, it, again, it's a Tarantino, can I say classic? It's a, it's a Tarantino movie, a very unique way and great way of telling stories. He's just so brilliant at that. Great dialogue, you know, his movies are known for just good dialogue and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you've got DiCaprio, you've got uh, Brad Pitt, and that's, that's a fucking, you know, they're, they're, they're fantastic performers, right? And under the direction of Tarantino, we've already seen what they're capable of. Um, so putting them together was fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna spoil much on whatnot. It's just a couple, like you know, these days in life of of uh, uh, you know Hollywood, basically. I think some things are definitely based on real events and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but it, it kind of just touched on you know the insecurities of actors and whatnot. Al Pacino was in it, which was fucking awesome to see him. Um, and but the one thing I want to speak about most was the Bruce Lee thing because obviously there's a lot of controversy going controversy going on, uh, you know, globally, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he, Bruce Lee's daughter, uh, even even uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they all kind of made it made it made a point that they portrayed Bruce Lee wrong incorrectly. Um, Tarantino tried to defend it himself and said, "Listen, you know, from my research, he was arrogant. He was this and whatnot. And I think he was. I think you know, from from people who's known him well, they've said, yeah, he was arrogant, but not as much as they portrayed him in the movie. So even within our own friends, bro, there's been like, you know, 
little little back and forth saying, oh, calm down, stop being so sensitive. But I'm like, look, my point is this, yeah? Um, you can't tell family members and close friends to say, like, oh, they're so sensitive. No, bro, if someone portrayed your father or your best friend wrong, you're going to be sensitive. So you can't say that, that they're being sensitive. You can't say that. They know him better than anyone in the world, right? I'm not saying Tarantino didn't do his research. Of course he did, right? But remember, Tarantino's, um, he, Tarantino's a unique guy, right? So when he portrays someone, he, he really emphasizes on, on almost like madness. You know, he takes it to the next level, right? Yeah, so when you fine. say arrogance, he takes it to the next level. So, from my perspective, look, I'm just a fan, I'm a nobody anyway, but I'm a fan of Bruce. Obviously, I've heard all the stories, the documentaries, read books, whatever, right? Yeah. And, and I, you know, I didn't know him, but from my research, which is not as deep as Tarantino's, but I'm just saying, he, he, I think he wasn't portrayed correctly. I personally don't think. He was very, very over, over um, arrogant and a bit cocky and... Uh, uh, I mean, Bruce was cocky, but I mean, just next level cocky, you know what I mean? And then, uh, um, just even his martial art, this, this is what gets me, like, this, this is the way I'm putting it. Bruce Lee's martial art, it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, right? yeah. I'm just saying, right? The scene is basically, um, he's fighting uh, a Brad Pitt's character, you yeah. know, just a friendly little bout, right? In real life, not, they're not in a movie set, they're on a movie set, but they're not shooting a movie, this is real life, this is Bruce Lee versus... Brad Pitt's character in the movie, right? Okay. And Brad Pitt's character. So, the way when they fought, Bruce Lee opened up with a fly kick. Now, from Bruce Lee's martial art philosophies, he always said those fancy moves are for the big, big screen. In a real fight, he wouldn't fight with fly kicks and all these jumping, spinning kicks and whatnot. He, he, he always was on the philosophy of... of um, uh, simplicity is the key, right? So just, you know, uh, fast, fast punches and leg kicks and stuff like that, right? So... The way the fight was portrayed was not based around Bruce, Lee, Bruce Lee's martial art philosophy, right? So that's why I feel like they even got that wrong. Uh, Tarantino yeah. even got that incorrectly, um, as well as his personality. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. doesn't matter about the fight, him winning or losing. It doesn't matter about that, right? Um, that's not the point. And the whole scene, I get the scene. I get the scene where, where people are like, just chill out, man. Just kind of take it as a joke, right? Because the scene was set as an environment of a joke. So, yes, I get that, right? It wasn't set as a, a serious scene. It was set as a com comedic scene. However, if that was the case, then you shouldn't have used Bruce Lee as a, as a character. It shouldn't have been him as a human being. You know what I mean? It should have yeah. been some random fictional character that imitated Bruce Lee. Because no one can take the piss out of Bruce Lee except Bruce Lee. Do you know what I mean? That's right. Um, so that, I think that was the issue. Shouldn't have used Bruce Lee's name. Should have just used another fictional character. Uh, and he walked and talked and whatever like Bruce Lee. But his name wasn't Bruce Lee. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So that's my thought on it anyway. Man. I mean, I, the scene was actually great, funny and whatnot. It was funny. But it, it was funny for the wrong reasons, I think. Um and, you know, I, like I said, as a fan, I don't think he, he was portrayed correctly as a person. And even his martial arts in the movie uh, against uh, the fight against Brad Pitt's character wasn't, again, based on his philosophy of fighting. So, yeah, I mean, that was my thoughts on that. Uh, the boys, like, like I said, I don't think they get it because they're not super, super fans, bro. They're fans, but not super fans, right? Yeah. So to them, it's just like, I'll chill out or whatever, man. But I'm like, listen, man, when his daughter, when his best friends are all talking about it, then there's a reason why they're talking about it. They're not just no, going to defend yeah. him. And all the research and everything you've ever heard, I've never, ever heard someone say, like, like he was the biggest dick ever. Like, it was always like, yes, he was arrogant, he was cocky, he was confident, but it was never like he went overboard and he was the biggest dick ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of... How they portrayed it a little bit. Um, so you know, I, I don't, I, I, don't know, man. I mean, Tarantino has defended it, and he's a fucking genius. So you know, it's hard to kind of go against him. But I think, you know, by looking at his movies, you know that he, he, um, he emphasizes a lot on emotion and character and whatnot. So I think he took the arrogance and kind of made it huge, well, yeah, which he kind of implemented. He it as a director, you know? Yeah. Overall, film is wicked. I enjoyed it, man. Again, it's one of those movies where you sit back, back enjoy it for a Tarantino movie. You enjoy all the the, the scenes and, and, and the, the videography and how it's shot and then the dialogue and just the expressions. Everything. You know what I mean? Like, you can appreciate those sort of things.
from well, a Tarantino honestly, movie. Now, Tarantino has always been that visual director. Like, you know, he's all about dialogue. He's, he's all about representing these characters. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, his films, the reason why people love his films is because of his characters, so mm. I'm sure it's a good I mean, movie. man, Pulp Fiction Forever will be one of the most greatest films for dialogue, man, and just one of those films that's just like shot in so many different uh, scenes in different parts of the movies and whatnot, and just, just the coolest thing, like, Sam Jackson was like the coolest motherfucker ever, man, you know what I'm trying to say? It's like... Exactly. How how he, Sam Jackson was directed well, It's just so perfect for Sam Jackson It was such a great movie So yeah, listen, I recommend it man It's a Tarantino movie, it's definitely worth watching He's such a genius um, You can't, you can't You can't you can't go wrong with a Tarantino movie But saying that, there was that one What was it called? With Kurt Russell, the car one The B-rated one Death of Waste So something I can't remember what it's called But that was kind of uh, basic That's But um, cool. with Tarantino again What's it called? Death Proof. Mm. I see what he was going for in that movie. He was, he was intentionally creating a B-class movie, but I just remember it was just so boring and the dialogue wasn't as great as you would expect it. But anyway, I mean, Tarantino's a genius. No, definitely. I will check it out. Uh, as soon as I get some free time. I know I'm off this week, so I'll maybe go take a trip to the cinema. So I don't mind. Definitely will check that out. Cool, man. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Um, uh, what else is going on, Kibbs? More out? Have you heard anything? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, you know. I don't know what's been happening in the movie world, to be honest. I mean, I know that Marvel I, Black Panther 2, is uh, Mike Freeman coming back, yeah? I saw something about he's coming back. Obviously, the, the, the rumours of uh, Namor, the Sea King... Is I think did I say his name right? Yeah, uh, he's thinking, gonna be yeah. in it because the F reference to Avengers Endgame. I don't know if people are taking it serious, but you remember the underground earthquake under the water? Um, that was possibly to do with him or connection to him. Um, I read that um, Bill and Ted Three. They're gonna get Carl, Carl, uh, John Carlin. Is that his name John Carlin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his daughter. Rufus, his daughter. Rufus. What's that, Rufus? Yeah. yeah. Um, get his daughter involved as, as, as respect. Um, nice. There was something else I saw. I, I freaking scrolled through it. I even liked the post and I can't even <laughs> remember what it was now. Um, Have you been watching Netflix recently, bro? Netflix? Yeah. But what on Netflix? What do you mean? So, uh, The Great Hack. Have you seen that yet? Which one? The Great Hack. No. What's that? So it's just a documentary regarding, uh, you know, Trump's, uh, uh, sorry, Trump's, you know, Trump's uh, pre presidency, uh, and it's about how our data surpassed oil last year, and how much data is in trillions. Oh, I and think how, I know what this company, might be talking about. Yeah, uh, really interesting program. I saw it last night. Couldn't sleep, so uh, I was watching that, which was quite good. And I tried to start off, huh? I was going to say about the data and stuff, it's very interesting because even in the line of work that I'm working in, it's all about, it's all about data and the way, because I'm in advertising, right, and all of advertising is about relevance and collecting as much data as possible on some, on an individual and then getting that advertising, adverti advertising, whatever, to that person at that specific time and, and it's, it's so relevant to that individual that it, it's, it's an effective ad, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, um, but that whole data thing, like in Europe, they just got, they got this thing called GDPR, which is like a, a data protection thing. So now, excuse me, fuck, man, I drank, I had a fucking Burger King, it's fucked up my digestive system. <laughs> cheat diet, cheat meal. Um, anyway, um, this GDPR stuff, you're not, not allowed, we're not allowed to now use European third party data. Third party data meaning, like all these companies like ours, for example, uh, Dow Jones, they, they, they work with third party companies, right? Yeah. Blue Kai is one of them, for example, and they, they, they're responsible for collecting data, kind of cleaning it all, all up, makes choice yeah. legit, and they collect their data from, you know, stuff like uh, Amex credit cards. You know, when you fill up an Amex credit card, it asks you this, your name, your da da da, -da job title, blah 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 blah. Yeah. So it kind of categorizes you, puts you in different sections and segments and whatnot, uh, and they clean up. Anyway, we work with these companies. 
companies and then we use that data to target people um, to specific, you know, for specific ads. In uh-huh. Europe, since last year, we have not been able to use that. Uh, um, in Europe, they kind of shut all that down. You're not allowed to target users based on their data, um, yeah. especially third-party data. So I know some companies getting around it with first-party data. First-party meaning that your your website or whatever has collected it directly. Yeah. Um, but no, they're clamping down on it because it is scary, bro. Like even right now, through my fucking camera, they're collecting data. You, bro, you won't believe some of the target stuff they could do. Like, there's some video companies, right? That 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 do video advertising that can report back on the video advertising on facial expressions and emotions. And if someone laughed at your video, if someone cried at your video, what point did they cry at? Or how was their facial emotions? at this point of the video, shit like that, this emotional uh, reporting, bro, can you imagine that, bro, can you imagine that, that's like, it's like Disney, for example, just, you know, putting on end games and just recording my facial features and my emotions throughout the whole fucking film and say, oh, at this point, you know, 20 billion people, well, it's not, there's not, so it's no such <laughs> thing, um, 20 million people cried at this point, cool, we need to make a scene like this in the next, do you know what I'm trying to say, like, that's how deep they can get with Target, and then these fucking cameras are recording our face, like, not just recording us, bro, but our emotions, and our facial expressions, and recording maybe shit behind me, bro, like, they'll see that Bruce Lee picture over there, or Batman thing over here, and they'll be like, cool, this kid's into this guy, I call myself a kid as well, thankful. Yeah. cool, this guy's into Batman, so, you know what I mean, they use that data, it's crazy, bro, even with audio, yeah. We'll be talking about something, right? We'll be talking about something, and then our phone can hear it. Next thing, you're getting an ad about it. You know, we'll be talking about a car. Uh, I said Voxel Nova earlier on. My phone heard it. You know, I, I, there's, an, it, there's a possibility that a Voxel Nova, which don't exist anymore, but a car ad will show up again. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Or we'll yeah. talk about F1 or something. But that's how deep they, they are with data collection now. Um, I went on a fucking rant because you brought that up, but it's, I'm literally kind of in it. In, in my in my um, in the business I work in, but uh, it's an interesting documentary. I'll try and check it out. No, check it out, man. I, I really it kind of scared me in a way, but definitely one to watch. Uh, other than that, have you been watching Woo Warriors? Because I tried to give it a go, but it looked very easy. Yeah, I mean, I told you, bro. It's not. It's not something. It, it, yeah, it, it's not great. It's it's a time killer. Yeah. You know, something on the back. I'm, I'm a, I'm a um, Eco Iwas fan. Um, but yeah, it's it's not fucking great. It's not yeah, great at no, all. I mean, um, so yeah, I wouldn't even recommend even it. If your time is though. valuable, which at the moment it is, I would not recommend it. Yeah, even the martial arts was a bit dumbed down. I, I didn't, I didn't think there were, I didn't think he got the right choreographers and that allowed him to express his style, bro. He no. needs to be brutal. We've seen his martial arts style. It's fucking brutal. Exactly. So I think maybe they toned down a little bit. Exactly. I watched... Uh, what did I watch? What did I watch? I'm trying to think what I watched the other day. Um, uh, shit, I can't remember what I watched. Uh, I finished that one off anyway, the War, uh, War Warriors. Um, I'm trying to think what else, man. There was something else. Anything else? Anything else you've heard of, bro? Uh, I know people are probably like, you motherfuckers should do your research. We did, motherfuckers. We forgot. <laughs> Not much has happened this week. That's the thing. I mean, I know Avengers Endgame, you know, it's still got a massive buzz. Uh, the DVD comes out, what is it? The Blu-ray comes out next week. Uh, I want to thank everybody who joined us uh, the week before, uh, on Monday, uh, last Monday, or the Shazam March along had such a great audience reaction. It was absolutely awesome, man. It was good fun to see everybody there. Uh, and it was nice to watch it in the new Geek Tower as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, not much. Oh, that's though. cool. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think what else, man. It's coming out and come out on Netflix or Disney. Um... No, I'm blank, Mo. I'm blank. I can't think of anything else. Check on my Facebook uh, to see if there's anything that's come up. Relevant. Let me quickly check. Yeah. Um, quickly get my iPad on. Man, I've been playing this freaking game, yeah? You know the Marvel Future fight? Yeah. And I'm trying to unlock Silver Surfer. Shit, so, I'm so addicted to the game, I just click 
to the game. Um, I'm trying to unlock Silver Surfer, but it's a mission. You have to beat Galactus in this kind of one of the modes, right? But yeah. you can't even beat him. And when you like, I, I'm like, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but but um, um, you have to collect these biometrics basically. Anyway, you collect yeah. ten, you get him. Blah blah blah. If you beat Galactus once, you get one, but it's impossible to beat. Man, I can't even get him. Um, so yeah, that's been bugging me. Give me a sec. Go on, man. Let me get. I'm, I'm on a freaking YouTube. I don't even know where I'm going. Facebook. There we go. Oh, come on, man. I went to a Japanese restaurant the other day. A halal, halal one, bro. Got myself a halal lager, and uh, shit was nasty. Wasn't <laughs> it good? Bro, listen, man, I, I'm i not a drinker, so I don't know what the alcohol effects gives to you, but the drink itself tastes butters, bro. Um, so for all you drinkers out there, I don't know how you do it. Obviously, the alcohol is probably the part that you like, but... Um, no, they like that, the butters taste as well, bro. What's that? So they like the butters taste as well, bro. Ah, God, it was nasty. It was nasty. But I drank it. I felt like, you know, it looked so haram, but I drank it. Um, <laughs> serious. Kibla Amadar, yeah? That's the white, white, white one to go to, yeah? Yeah, bro. Oh, right. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, you, you, uh, the Roger, Roger Rabbit and Pink Panther animator Richard Williams dies at 86. Yeah, man. Great, great, great artist. Gave us some iconic characters. Uh, the Pink Panther as well. So, rest in peace, man. Pink Panther, you know, I haven't, yeah, rest in peace, man. I wonder if they will redo that, you know, I'll never forget the movie with the uh, the French guy, it was so hilarious, man. What's his name, Peter Sellers? Yeah, 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 that's it, it was such a hilarious movie, man. Bro, you remember that uh, scene that always used to crack us up? The one when he's in the gym, like, the, 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 yeah. um, the gymnastics thing, yeah, I'll never forget that, man, freaking hilarious. Uh, well, you got here, you got the Shazam thing. Shazam. Talk about what. I do old news, bro. Uh, hold on. There's another one I follow. Comic book sign. Comic book heroes. I think that's the one. Why not basic? Yeah, oh, this is one. This one's got something on it. Um, okay, cool. Let me scroll through real quick. Oh, did you hear Obi Wan Kenobi? Um, what's his name? Um, they're gonna Disney's gonna release an Obi Wan Kenobi show, and Mister um, McGregor. Will McGregor is coming back for it. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so that's to be in. Look, Disney's gonna pull off some fucking amazing stuff because they have the money to pay. So any like you know any of these spin off shows, it won't be just random guys playing characters they're like hey listen we need you to come back how much do you want and they're just going to give the monies and then everyone's going to pay them the monies exactly exactly uh you know when they're looking to what? release uh, the disney channel streaming service i think it's this, i'm not sure not the exact date but i think it's this year coming up soon in a couple of months or something all right interesting uh, uh all right what's going on what disney what off a cheaper no 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 if you Walkie Star teases what their reunion might look like. Dolph Lundgren hits a new project. Oh, I think Dolph Lundgren and, and, and Sylvester Stallone are working on a new project, man. I don't know if it's a movie, I think it might be a TV program. Okay, interesting. Old school, old school heroes, man. They're bringing it back, man. I know, I know. The old schools, man. I've got to love There's a documentary that came on the other day about Sylvester Stallone and. Uh, his, his work, his work, and how they keep, they kept on, they all kept on asking him a question on, why do you keep bringing these guys back? And he goes, I just want to finish their stories. Mm. But you know what? You know what? Like Rocky, for example, the amount of people that has inspi he's inspired by Rocky, you wouldn't believe it, bro. I hear it on fi from fighters all the time. Like, he's a fictional character, but the what he ex expressed in that movie of, of the underdog and whatnot, uh, just rising and whatever, like, Fighters, real life fighters look up to Rocky. It's crazy, but 
they get Rocky for inspiration. David Goggins is famous about talking about how we how we how we look at that movie for uh, for inspiration and stuff. It's it's crazy. So it's iconic, man. No, oh, sick, absolutely sick. It's, it's it's nice to know that fictional character can do that. Yeah, man. I mean, this is what I'm saying. Like, like you know, the way we see comic book heroes and we kind of get inspired and they're good guys. The moistness. It's the same thing, but they're fictional characters. And and if you do a great enough job to express their story so good that you get inspired by it, you freaking done a good job, man. You can't fucking deny that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Did you watch that Captain America video I sent you? The, yeah, exactly. I mean, that was wicked. That was moist. Yeah, some, some of the stuff that's coming out now for Endgame, I think there's an Iron Man one out, which uh, almost had me in tears, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm still going through this. I'm not seeing nothing great. Join Twitch. Yeah, I don't think much has happened this week, to be honest, bro. No, I don't see nothing too breaking. What's this? Oh, do you know um, something? You know that kid that was in that film, Grown Ups, with Dan of Sandler, that Disney style, yeah. uh, star, Cameron, Cameron Boyce? Yeah. I mean, this is old news, man. He passed, I think, did he pass away or commit suicide or something? Uh, speak out on his death. I think he committed suicide. Oh, my God. He's a young kid, man. Yeah, it was a while ago. Young kid, man. And he was in that Adam Sandler movie. He looks so, so young. I'm just like, it's crazy, man. Oh, man. This is, you know what, bro? At the moment, now, it's, it's, it's a sad time because there's a lot of youngsters that are doing silly shit because, I don't know, they feel like they're not accepted or they're finding life a bit tough. But I'm like, what would... What, what would draw them to that? You know what I mean? Like suicide, right? Mental health. Uh, it's all mental health. And it, it, I think mental health is such a broad way of of putting it because there's so many aspects within mental health that would get you to that stage. You yeah. know, some people lead to suicide. Some people lead to drugs. And also some people lead to going into a school and shooting up cover kids. You know what I'm trying to say? There's so many aspects of it. And I think we all go through it in our own ways, but we all handle it different. And there's different levels of it. You know what I mean? No, no, of course, of course. It's just, it's just a shame. You know, the kid, I swear he's not even in his 20s. No. In his 20s, man. It's crazy, man. I mean, yeah, it's scary. I mean, last week we spoke, you know, briefly about some of the shootings that happened in the US. You know, it's scary. Like, I think there were some statistics. Like, they're one. I think it's like the. F it's, it's only so far halfway through the year, and they've already they've already had 300 mass mass shootings in America. Right. And I think they consider mass shootings like if, you, if four people or three or four people are, are killed then it's considered a mass shooting and globally America's killing it like I mean fucking that's the wrong words to use but globally it, it, when you consider mass shootings around the world America's stats are just way beyond any other country and, and I don't know it's, it's crazy and I, I don't want to say it's gun laws man because you could do shit in so many different countries that there's some sort of mental health that's happening in America and I think it's the environment of America you know it's like the land of opportunity the land of free but then it's such a big place right that the state is such a big place there's so many places where people are like if this is the land of opportunities why am I not feeling I'm getting the opportunity and then they could probably go crazy whereas like and this is my own theory, it's probably bullshit, right? But you're in another country where everyone's poor or whatever, but everyone's happy. So it's not like I've been left out. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, they probably do feel it, but I, the, the poor environment must... I don't know, I, I don't know, maybe the poor environment within them is just a happy feeling. I've been to so many countries where people don't have shit, but they're just smiling. They're fucking smiling. They're not sad, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, and maybe all the fancy bullshit is not much in their face, or they, or, or the culture's not really emphasizes much on that fancy, having all the fancy bullshit. Whereas in the US, I'm, I, you know, they emphasize a lot on the American dream and, you know, uh, you know the fancy shit and, and the, the, the high-rise shit. So maybe, you know, someone who feels like they're not getting that attention and all that shit's just phoning in their face and in their head and they're living in a country which promotes it. It's the American dream and whatnot. How am I not getting this? And maybe that just leads them to some sort of, you know, fucked up situation. I mean, that is a, that could be a whole bullshit theory, to be honest. I just made that shit up. But I feel like, I don't know, it's crazy how America has, you know, the highest stats of, of, of uh, 
mass shootings, you know, globally. No, you're right. I mean, bro, there's another program you need to watch. I think you're going to really enjoy it. And, and it touches on this subject as well. It's on Netflix as well. It's uh, directed by Michael Moore. He did not Fahrenheit 9-11. This is called Fahrenheit 11-9. And it's the same thing about... Uh, well, it's about Trump's presidency again. But uh, it's, it goes into more depth about, you know, the shootings and how it's caused and some of the shit that's happening around America that we don't see. Uh, yeah. As you said, you know, you think it's going to be a land of opportunity, but it ain't, man. There's all sorts of drama going on there. Exactly, and they, and they don't care, man. I mean, Joe Rogan, too, I love, the, I love listening to him because he has such interesting people on there. He had Bernie Sanders on there the other, other week, and he's known to be like a very uh, respected candidate for the presidency and whatnot. But then he always has this FBI guy or this cop or something he had on there, and he was saying that in some areas, for example, bro, in the US, yeah, like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they were dealing with some sort of crime epidemic, like, like crack and people on crack and whatever, right? 20 years, 30 years down the line, the police are still dealing with the same academ- uh, um, epidemic. I don't know if, I know if I'm using the right word. In that same area, and, and, and that just goes to show that nothing is being done to resolve these issues. It's kind of left to it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. So it's just kind of like it's such a big place. But yeah, there's people are just being left to it. If you're not, if you're unlucky to be born in one of these areas or in one of these. Uh, places in the US, just using the US for example, because there's mostly mo- there's loads of bad places in the world uh, or poor places in the world and whatnot. But again, we're talking about the land of opportunity right now. Um, if you're born in one of those places, man, when people say, "Oh, all you got to do is just work hard and study," you're like, no, it's not. It's not the case, man. If you were in that situation, you would understand. It's not. It's not as easy as you think. There's a lot of obstacles they have to overcome, and then there's once they do overcome that, there's there's the whole opportunity. There's a whole opportunity aspect of things, you know. Oh, yeah, Will yeah, I get yeah. the same opportunity based on the way I look or my name is or my color or whatever, right? You know what I'm trying to say? So, it's yeah, man. It's, it's crazy, man. Like I don't know if there is a hero to that country, for example, if, and if anyone would ever resolve anything, but um. It's tough, man. I think living in the U.S. must be tough, especially depending on, you know, your circumstances and whatnot. Uh, no, I mean, look, in the U.K., we have that shit, too. You know, we grew up in Tottenham, you know, and Tottenham is just known for just throwing, you know, all the immigrants and poor people into that sort of area, right? So that's why we had a lot of street crime and shit ourselves. But now they're gentrifying shit and rich people are coming back. And is that a good thing maybe one thing yeah in one way is but what about all the poor people man what the fuck are you doing for them like rent's gone up so much how are you supposed to um you know justify them you're just getting rid of them you're not really uh you know i i guess with all this brexit shit, brexit shit going on people don't really care want them out but we should be helping people man we should be helping people elevate rather than just kicking them out and you know give, leaving them no choice uh but so, so i don't know man i mean i feel like, you know, we, we're privileged to live in these countries, but these countries have issues too, man, you know what I mean? No, I mean, is it, the issues that are, that are here are, are so far gone, it's not really about the country no more, it's about the people that are benefiting from it, you know what I mean? It has become one big business, and that program, Fahrenheit uh, 11.9, really shows what these sort of countries are, and they're not for the people, bro. Honestly, never it's never be. been for the people. If you've got a country that's run by a monarch and still suffering shit, then it's not, it's, it's, it's all business, bro. Of it's, course it is. I, I was speaking to, who was I speaking to about it? I was speaking to someone yesterday about it. And I, 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 I use Saudi Arabia as an example because I'm a Muslim, so I don't want to talk about any other race or religion. I'll talk about, like, Muslims because I am one so I feel like I could discuss it I mean Saudi Arabia man supposed to be the holiest place for Muslims right a country ruled by holy land right they have their internal shit women are degraded women can't drive that's not a Muslim thing that's a Saudi thing so again there they're not following Islamic things but put that aside for a second man we went there bro and we saw all those Sudan people who were just poor and beggars and slaves and I'm like what the fuck we're in Saudi Arabia first of all this is the holy land right the holiest land for for Muslims in the world one of the holiest places in the world yeah. right so if that doesn't motivate you as a local Saudi Arabian what the fuck else would and then these Saudi Arabians feel like they don't have money man they got oil money the king has 
money. I mean, what the fuck? Mm. How could you allow this to happen? Like, you know what I'm trying to say? It's all business. It's all got to do with business, man. If you're a Saudi king and you got Mecca there and you're supposed to be a religious, you know, amazing p- person and whatever, you're supposed to be a religious Muslim Islam following Islam and you're just going to let Sudan people just be beggars on the street when you can easily, like, it won't, it won't even affect your financial income by a percentage probably because that, that's how rich they are and you choose not to do nothing. Bro, religion ain't shit to these people, bro. All these countries that are followed by religion and we're following the religious way and, you know, we're, bullshit, man. It's all fucking business. Religion, your money is your religion. It ain't fucking the true religion of being a good human being. It's, it's fucking how much money you can make um, and how much power can you have over people. It's got nothing to do with the people. If it was true religion, regardless of the religion, bro, regardless of the religion, Buddha, like be if you're Buddha, Hindu, Jew, Jewish, Christian, Islam, if it followed the true way of one of these religions, bro, the c- countries will be at peace um, and, you know, there'll be no poor people, there won't be kids that will have no food. Trust me, it'll be pure. Uh, if any atheists are listening and you don't believe in that shit, it's cool. I mean, like, listen, you don't have to. Uh, you can... I'm not saying that you can be non-religious and not believe in God and be a good human being. That that is a hundred percent thing. So I'm just saying, if, if religion is is supposed to be used as a guideline, religion is supposed to be pure and peaceful. So I'm just saying that. Um, so don't get offended by, you know, saying that if you're not a religious person, whatever. But um, you see, what I'm trying to say, bro. No, no, I totally get you, Brian. And I suppose we've been raised up in a way where we haven't discriminated. You know, we see people as people. We don't see people as colour or religion. Yeah. yeah, man. People so ask we, me all the time. Like, I get the same question all the time when, you know, when I was, you know, with my exes and they were Chinese and, you know, they weren't Muslim. And they would ask me all the time, bro, like, are, are they Muslim? Like, oh, people don't know, what are you going to do about the religion? I'm like, listen, they're good human beings. Nothing else bothers me. I'm going to be a Muslim. They accept me to be a Muslim. They could be whatever they want, spiritual, whatever. But they, I just see goodness in them. So don't, don't ask me these questions about... I, my, if my religion, if my religion, I can't even say it. I will, 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 will. If my religion is telling me to, if my religion keeps me away from people, like separates me from someone, then I think the message is wrong. My religion, if I use my religion to bring me closer to people, then that, it's from, to me, that's the true Islam or that's the true religion, whatever you follow. But if I'm gonna say to a good person that, hey, listen, I can't be with you because you're not my religion. I, that's my. That's me using my religion to separate me from another good human being. I'm like, nah, that's not right. Now, I don't. Me, that's from my understanding. That's not the true emphasis on these religions. Um, right. Right. But anyway, I'm fucking getting deep. But that, that's just my perspective. What's my point of view on things? No, I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with being emotional about that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a subject that people need to know and need to talk about. I think the problem is. Excuse me, McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> any McDonald's plugins? Uh, people are stuck in their own world, bro. You know. Yeah. You bro, tell me what listen, you everyone, think. If you see stuff on, on TV and what's happening in the in the world right now, and it doesn't upset you, then you're you're not you're not here. You're not here. If you're thinking about money. Uh, what it can get you as a person and the rest of it, then it's not going to get you. It's not going to get you nowhere, man. And people are not going to come close to you if you're going to be... Well, I don't know. It's weird. I just feel like people are not hey, here. Bro, I, I, listen, bro. I, I, you know what? Like, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that we think like the way we do and there's a lot for us to learn. Um, and I'm hmm. grateful that I lived out in Asia or I lived in these different countries because it helped me really understand human beings more. I've still got a lot to learn, don't get me wrong. But it helped me more on what the fuck people, the reality of the world and and certain places and whatnot and how I don't want to be. Bro, what you're saying is, though, it, it, it is the case, though, man. There's these fucking bubbles that I have been associated with, right, in Hong Kong and Singapore, right, just because I'm an expat and I earn a certain amount of money and whatnot. Man, it, it's just an unrealistic lifestyle. Well, no, when I say unrealistic, it's realistic to them, right? So... I'm not trying to discriminate or not, but there's not a worry in their head, so they're not concerning themselves with other people's worries. You know what I'm trying to say? Like they don't give a shit about what happens around the world because it doesn't concern them, and yeah. their their life is good. 
so but why should I make my life more stressful about concerning about other people's shit? You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm not saying that you have to make your life con- uh, um, uh, stressful worrying about other people's shit, but it will help you appreciate more what you have. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, you got, you know, you open your 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 tap and you got fresh water. Now that's a privilege, man. Mm-hmm. And when you just hear stories of kids who don't have water and whatnot. You know, yes, there's things you can do. You can donate charity, and some people actually go out to the countries and do spend their actual time on helping these on helping these people. But it just makes you a bit more appreciative of, you know, what I got fucking running war, and if I switch on a switch, it comes out hot. You know what I mean? And if yeah. I pull it in this ice box, it comes out cold. I cannot just have water. I can manipulate the temperature of the water to satisfy my needs on the fucking day, or if I need to take a shower. You know what I'm trying to say? Like we don't even just just have. Water, bro, we have water that we can manipulate with, man. It's fucking crazy, right? So it's just about m- making you appreciate more, and that's that's. I mean, I'm like I said, I've just been privileged to kind of live out in these in these places and just be a part of these bubbles, just to understand more of how I should be thinking and be more appreciative of what I have. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, exactly. So true. Yeah. Hey, look, I've gone fucking. I've gone into one. <laughs> when you get me into it, I fucking get into it. That's probably why I'm single, but when I go out on these dates, I get into it, and they're probably like, this fucking guy's crazy. But um, <laughs> back to some geeky news, man. I remembered what I, I saw. Show, tell us, tell my us. Boy, my boy from Smallville, Superman, what was his name again? Tom, Tom Welling. Yes, he's coming back to DC to play Superman in the Infinite Crisis story they're doing on the CW shows. Nice. Now listen, I yeah, exactly. I'm not a fan of the CW shows. We spoke about this last week. We lost interest. But for this Infinite... Was it called... It's not called Infinite Wars. It's called... What's it called, bro? Infinite... Um, no, I think it's Crisis on Two Earths. Right, that's the one. Fucking out. I'm interested, bro, because... <laughs> Brendan Wolf is coming back as Superman. This guy, Tom... Tom Holland... Not Tom Holland. Whatever. Tom whatever is coming back as Superman. Uh, bro... This might be fucking good, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get hold. When this comes out, I think I want to watch this. I want to watch this. Um, so that's I'm fucking interesting, what bro. What's that, sorry? I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. I'm I'm watching it. I'm 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 already moist. They got me. They got me. I'm like cool. I'm moist. I'm in. Um, <laughs> Dark Phoenix ends theoretical fear. Oh, I can't even speak. The theater one <laughs> as lowest grossing. It's fucking hell, excuse me, this bird can fuck me up. Dark Phoenix ends his theatrical run as the lowest grossing X-Men movie ever. Lose. Did you watch it? No. It's fucking basic. I mean, no, I like <laughs> You said you okay. liked it, bro. You said you liked it. I did. I liked scenes of it, bro. I like scenes of it. Now, would I watch it again? Fuck no. But there were scenes. Michael my, my Fassbender is a wicked Magneto. Yeah. Right? There were certain fun scenes. But, um, man, I think Fox are like, fake fuck, we made that deal. <laughs> Let's get rid of this franchise because, <laughs> boy, they get slated, bro. What a shit. It, it was just done shit. Like, you know, the Phoenix Saga is like an Infinity War story. you got to put yeah. 22 movies together for it. You know what I'm trying to say? You can't fucking just make it in one movie. Um, and I think that's where Fox just lose. So, anyway, um, not to laugh at Fox, but, you know, glad they made the deal with... Uh, Disney, let's make it happen. Um, there's uh, another big Marvel series rumor for the Disney Plus. I think they're looking to make a Hulk series or maybe a She-Hulk series or something. I think Mark Bernard was like making uh, predictions that it could be a She-Hulk thing. And also Miss um, Marvel, Camilla Kal- 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 Khan, you know the Arab one. Yeah. Uh, there's potential for those for for uh, the Disney uh, uh, Disney Plus channel. Nice. Um, did you watch the, um, the Krypton show? Well, yeah, wait, I had, I only saw the first two episodes, yeah? And again, yeah. I, I think I need to watch them. I mean, shout outs to the Geek of Steel and the Aspiring Kryptonian. They really enjoyed it. I need to watch it. But I heard it got good night. That, that's what I was just about to say. So fans are, you know, trying to save the show. So I didn't realise it got a... Uh, a good night. Mm. I, I watched the first episode and uh, I didn't think it was shit at that moment, but um, uh, I just didn't really get attracted to go in and watch it. Maybe i got to give it a chance as well. Yeah, it's just giving it time, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what else is going on? 
But yeah, the Bill and Ted thing we spoke about, George Carlin's daughter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like, sounds like Disney wasn't too happy with the last of the X-Men movies. Of course they wasn't, fucking hell. Who was happy, man? Nobody was. Mark Waffalo, which is Richard J. Happy. Oh, no, no, basic, basic, basic. Come on, anything good. I think that's it, you know, bro. I mean, we got deep into some deep stuff, which is great. Um, always good to kind of give our thoughts on, on emotional stuff. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm freaking going crazy here. Did we speak about um, who's going to be directing um, uh, Venom 2? Uh, what's his name? Well, Andy Serkis. No, we haven't spoken about that. Did we speak about that last week or not? No, no we didn't touch base on that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's interesting. I mean, one, I'm glad they're making a Venom 2. I, I hope they bring him into the Spider-Man universe because there's a problem, man, you know what I mean, if you don't. Um, so hopefully they bring him in or they get Spider-Man involved in the universe or they make a, meal, a, a deal with the Disney and just sort it out, man. They need to make a deal, man. Definitely yep, need they need to make a deal. They need Venom in there, man. Yep. Yeah, they definitely need Venom. I don't know, why, why would they do that for, anyway? I mean, the movie made money. I think that's I, why. And they had to use the property as yeah. soon as... So... Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, um... But... With the success of Disney, it's best to just make a freaking deal. I mean, Spider-Man, and this Spider-Man Far From Home was the first Spider-Man movie to ever cost a billion dollar mark. Um, so they're obviously Disney's, man. They're, they're, they, they, they just know what they're doing with their characters, man. When I say Disney, I'm talking about the Marvel productions they got there. Yeah. Um, the Lion King surpasses the King of Wakanda. I think in The, the Lion King surpasses uh, the box office uh, with, with, uh, over Black Panther. Yeah, ten no, okay. highest grossing movie ever. Wow, and it wasn't that great. I have to be honest. I mean, when I said it, I, I said it, it's still moist, right? As a Lion King fan, but like I said, it never captured the emotions and the the, the, the from the animation. Like, the animation was, you know, they can manipulate the lion's face to capture all the emotions. This movie couldn't do it for me, and I couldn't get emotional when Mufasa died. And shit, spoiler alert! If you guys haven't seen it, it's fucking <laughs> it's weird. I, I couldn't capture the emotions when he died and whatnot and I was just like okay you know I, I gave my thoughts I, like I said it was like a David Attenborough uh, documentary with the Lion King music so it wasn't amazing but obviously it made the fucking money Disney's Disney's so I, bro I, I, it's so weird but Disney's so smart man it's like hey why don't we just make a, a real life version and don't change the fucking story at all don't even change the fucking dialogue and trust me, we'll make a billion dollars. And they fucking made a billion dollars. How the hell do you do that, bro? Did they keep everything the same? Bro, I, I, I give you my word. I mean, I haven't done the math, so I haven't counted. I'm sure it's online. But I want to say 95% of the movie was the same dialogue and same shots. Like, 95%, I want to say. Shit. It's fucking crazy. Uh, what is this? Thor, Love and Fun director Taika Watiti meets with Ryan Gosling. I wonder if that's got to do with Thor. That would be interesting. Ryan Gosling, it's true, man. Who could he play in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? He could play a character. I don't know who they would put him as, though. Yeah. Uh, still going for the list, man. Loads of shit. Man. He-Man, Master of the Universe, announced by DC Comics, okay. Mm. No. I, no, no, no. The Krypton series, I never watched, actually. Sorry? Lobo, the, the, the vigilante, not vigilante, the, uh, what was he, the bounty hunter or something? Yeah. In the DC Universe. Yeah. So, he, was in, the, he, he was, was in the, he was in that Krypton, Krypton show. Yeah, he was right? in the show. Yeah. Yeah, what we spoke about earlier, Tom Willen, or Tom Willen just confirmed he's returning to Superman in Crisis of Infinity Earth. I'm going to watch that. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be some next level moistness. Yeah. Ghost Rider actor dies at 79. What? Uh, Who's this? That's a... Uh, Peter Fonda. Yeah. Star of Easy Rider. Easy Ghost, Rider. Ghost and he plays the original Captain America. Oh, really? Yeah. What's this Ghost Rider? It says Ghost Rider as well. 
I think his name was Ghost Rider in the movie Easy Rider with Dennis Hopper. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he passed away at um, 70, what did they say? 79. Hmm. You know that Ghost Rider show, they're doing that, right? For, is it? No, on Hulu. Ghost Rider and Hellstorm. Did we speak about that? No, we didn't. What, they're looking to do that. Yeah, so they're picking the Ghost Rider from the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. program, which was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was really good. And then Hellstorm. Be interesting, man. Definitely, I'll check that out. Uh, uh, Mortal Kombat reboot, reboot cast for four additional fighters. Is that the game, or are they fucking making a live action movie? I think they're going to do the live action, am I? Damn. Hey, I think Mortal Kombat they could do well, man. Like, I think said in regards to the video games, they've cons they've compiled a really great story for, especially from a beat 'em up video game. Okay, interesting. Uh, rumors. If the rumor is true, PlayStation Five is going to be one of the most powerful machines ever. That's interesting. I mean, I'm not a video game guy as much as I used to be, but. Man, how much more powerful can you get? Exactly. Unless you can travel this? back in time. Uncle Buck came knocking 30 years ago. What a brilliant movie, oh, man. Shit. John Candy, legend. And even little Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, I know. I love that movie, man. Such a good film. Yeah, August, 6th, August 16th, 1989. What a fucking brilliant movie. I love that movie, man. Oh, man. I keep remembering, you know, every time I see that, it always gets me to uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, well, another brilliant film, freaking hell. When that scene, when they go into the hotel room, and they look at the yeah. and that song comes, and ding, 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 and then he smiles oh. at him, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and when he whacks his face with his underpen, I'm like, oh my god. Brilliant film. What a brilliant Steve, Steve Martin and John Candy did. What a great, that was a great movie, man. And then the last bit, man. If you ain't seen planes, trains, and automobiles, you guys are basically yeah. that last scene, man. Because watching it oh. now, it's, it just gets even more sad, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I love that tune. I mean, again, the AE's pop tunes or whatever. I love that tune. <laughs> yeah, it's a big tune. Very big tune. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, what is this? Final Fantasy VII Remake is coming out. I mean, fucking, that was one of my favourite games on the PS1. Um, I remember playing that game so much, I blew up my PlayStation. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, so they're doing a remake. It looks brilliant, actually. Um, Peaky Blinders Season 5 premiere date. Have you, um, I don't know, there's no date on here, but have you seen Peaky Blinders? No, I haven't, bro. Awesome! I watched season one. I couldn't really get into it. I do. I think I need to give that start. Just carry on with it. Um, but people are saying it's fucking awesome. It's one of the best. Just, I don't know. I saw season one. I didn't really get too into it. Um, but I need to pay more attention to it. Yeah, I think I, I, I need to. Oh, I suppose once all this work is done and the TV's up in the wall, then I'll catch up with loads of stuff. I mean, this year I hardly even got to go to the cinema. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know you missed out on a lot. I'm trying to keep up. I've got not much going on out here. All I got out here is training and then some movies. So every time a movie comes out, I'm in the cinema, bro. Uh, I'll try my best to keep up as, up to date as much as possible. Yeah. Nah. I mean, well, Disney faced live action Mulan. You know, so they're doing a live action Mulan movie, right? Um, you know, I never saw the animation, but I think it was based on uh, like a East Asian, like Chinese sort of philosophy movie, I don't know, fantasy type movie. Um, what is this though? Breaking f Disney face in live action Mulan boycott over controversial statement made by Star. What did the Star say, man? Disney live action Mulan face over. I don't know, some Hong Kong shit. Some shit's going down in Hong Kong, bro. You know, when I first moved to Hong Kong, bro, they just was finishing up on the protest um, that they had back then, the umbrella protest. I can't remember what I, Again, it was always got to do with China, right? Yeah. And then I leave then I leave, so four years I'm living there, nothing. Then I leave, and now they got more shit going on in Hong Kong, and it's mad, bro. Not saying anything, but maybe I was just a peacemaker or whatnot. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on in Hong Kong. I'm, I'm worried for my friends, some of my friends there. It gets violent. The problem is with these protests, people get violent, right? 
And whether it's a, it's a conspiracy and gangs are, you know, police are organized or governments organizing violence, whatever, that is true. There are things, some of that stuff has been true in the US and whatever, right? But the moment shit gets violent and it's just like, you know, people just get so crazy that it's like, if you're, like, if you're, what is white t shirts versus black t shirts? Literally, it's kind of like that. And if you're wearing an opposite color t shirt, it's like, we should beat you up. This is not a protest anymore. No this is like gang fighting, man. This is like, you know, it's it's crazy, bro. Just because of political views, people are fucking each other up, like literally beating each other up. And uh, you know, uh, in in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, the situation is bad, man. People are just they're protesting on the streets, uh, and in the airport, and disrupting not just Hong Kong citizens. They're disrupting travelers and whatnot, man. That like, people's got nothing to do that China made with the British, and you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. But man, violence is something that I can't stand, and I think China's sending in the uh, the troops, like, I'm scared, man, like, for Hong Kong citizens, because I'm like, listen, man, if China's sending in the troops, you need to calm down, man, because China's a fucking entity you don't want to fuck with, and no one's going to help you, man. They say in the Middle East where the U.S. will be like, yeah, yeah, we'll come and help you and steal your oil and shit, um, anyway, controversial <laughs> games, but you're not going to get help. You're not going to get help from the U.S. and whatnot. No one's fucking with China. I'm telling you, yeah. if the U.S. tries to help and tried to intervene with China's business, China's like, hold on a second, like, back the fuck up, like, China creates fucking land, bro, it's, it's mad, so, I don't know, man, I'm just worried for my friends in Hong Kong, and I hope they can kind of sort it out. No, hopefully everybody there that we know is safe, uh, I know politics can get a bit shitty in countries, mm-hmm. man, it's just, just the same, as we said, people don't work for people. You know, it's about themselves, it's greed involved, yep. all sorts of drama. And really, they're I mean. smart. They're smart the way they do it because they turn into people against each other. The only people that can help people with people. And they're smart, so smart, they're able to manipulate people where they turn the people against each other. So it would never be, um, it would never be, no place will ever be perfect because us people are just sometimes dumb as well. Uh, you know, we're so tribal that we just fall into different groups and... We have different thoughts about things, and it's hard for us to unite because we're fucking dumb. Um, you know, no, we're, no, we're smart too. But what I'm saying is, we fall into these groups and we end up, you know, hating upon each other as well, which is horrible. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, let's not get deep. Uh, the new season of The Boys is getting a bloody, it's getting bloody for Carl Uber, Urban. Um, yeah, I didn't cool. realize it had pictures for season two already, man. That's awesome. I'm glad they're making that. Yeah, no, it looks awesome, man. That's awesome photos. They've been social media and already. Twenty lost by Starkey uh, Keeper Sutherland injured in tour bus for, huh? Keeper Sutherland postpones music tour. Keeper Sutherland produces music or does music. Yeah, very the proper road start. Did you know? Yeah. I didn't know that, but anyway, he's injured uh, in a tour bus fall. He must have fell over and injured himself, so he has to he's postponed the tour. Oh man, yeah, he's got a good couple of fans, man. I haven't heard his music. I mean, actually, maybe listen to some after this. Oh. Yeah, I had no idea he done music, but a legend from Lost Boys in 24, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Um, I think that's it from me. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been just going through this, scrolling through, and uh, just kind of picking up on things and what. Shout outs to uh, comicbook.com on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Helping out with some of the news. Uh, details of Robert De Niro in DC's Joker movie. Do you know Robert De Niro is in the DC's Joker movie? Yeah, I saw him in the trailer. Oh, oh yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw him in the trailer, so. Uh, It'd be interesting to see what cool, character cool. he plays. I mean, I suppose Martin Scorsese was like, you need somebody else in there. Let's get, if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be Robert De Niro's. Come on, man, Scorsese is connected to all the, all the original gangsters, man, so why not? Exactly. Uh, cool, bro. Like, listen, I could go through this forever, man. I've gone up to Friday when I've gone, I think I've gone way past anything. But yeah, listen, man, it's been... Uh, no, it's been good, bro. It's been good, to catch up, bro. it's been good to catch up. I think we kind of expressed a lot of news and really expressed ourselves on... Un, un, unexpected topics today but um yeah other than that bro listen man like i'm happy that the house is coming along Thanks, um i can't wait for you to finish it and just move in there with the family and 
have a little home for a lava, which is beautiful. Um, you know, I'm still doing my thing out in Singapore. Yeah. And, you know, um, I miss you guys a lot and whatnot. No, but, same uh, here, bro, man. You same know, we're all, we're all on our journey, which is all going to lead us one epic moment. Yeah. Of in, it definitely of will, in, bro. It definitely will. Endgame. We'll, we'll, we'll get to our end game soon, bro. I can't wait to that uh, moment uh, when we're all united again. Um, but yeah, let's just <laughs> keep following us. This is a chapter in our books, man. Let's just make sure we write good, knowledgeable verses in our in our chapters, in our books. Yes, definitely, bro. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I'm excited. Definitely excited. And I'll show you guys some... Actually, you know what? While you're here, let's, let's do a quick tour around the house so you guys can see what's happening. So... As you can see, I've been painting. This is our front room. Uh, we picked a turquoise color. We wanted it to be quite bold. We didn't want it to be the boring old white, usually. Uh, so we picked yeah, that. Like. Uh, and, you know, a bit of color. So, as, you know, as Alara's growing up, it's going to inspire her. We picked creative colors. Uh, the bedroom, uh, we did like a gray, pebble, pebble gray. Quite calming color. Uh, we're still painting the cupboards. We've got the electric chandeliers and everything's in there. Uh, the hallway's white and, and the toilet. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm, I might just show it to you, man. It's alright. It's looking much better now. Pow! We've got the bath sink. We've got the corner toilet in there. So we've got space. We even got a little cool. mobile phone holder for the toilet roll. Can you see it? Fucking hell, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, you have those moments where you're just supposed to take a shit and leave, but then you're on your phone and you get pins and needles on your legs, Because you've been sitting on the toilet after you're taking a shit on your phone for like 20 minutes. You're like, fuck my legs. <laughs> uh, the kitchen. The kitchen's done, basically. Just needs a good clean. Got the cooker in as well. But yeah, it's nice and cozy now. Uh, and then the new Geek Tower room, man. Oh my god. Uh, this is what I'm excited for because you can see all of these boxes here. Full of geeky goodness. Uh, but yeah, we picked a, a, a powder blue, it's called. Okay, so, uh, so what's this going to be like? The office? I thought it was going to be a large room. Uh, it will be a large room in a couple of years. Uh, she's going to still share with us. Man, any, because... any, she, any she got turfed for Iron Man figures? <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, you know what? It's, it's her room still. Uh, we're going to have the exercise bike here because Bell Liz is growing and... Uh, wife has got an exercise bike at her mum's that's not being used so I'm going to use it to get back into health and fitness properly when I'm back when we move in. Uh, the reason why we picked blue bro in this the powder blue uh, and you don't realise when, you, when you're picking colours it's something you'll see in Thailand when you're at the, at the coast and all you can see is blue waters and blue sky it's clear, it's clarity it's creative we wanted that look for this room that when wifey comes in and she does her canvas art or when she makes her cards or when I'm doing an art piece that I can stare into the distance. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, as long as it's... Yeah, it's got to be inspirational in some way. Yeah, so... Yeah, let's see. It's coming slowly, bro. It's getting there. So, I'm going to finish this room right. up and hopefully get and finish up early and uh, go spend some time with Alara because I'm, I'm missing her. The more I stay here, the more the more I uh, miss her. So, try and get home early today. Cool. Nice. Well, I'm going to just get ready for bed and hit the bed soon, man. But, um, yeah. No, another week, man. Let's just get cracking, man. I mean, people say they hate Mondays. I don't really hate Mondays, man. I embrace Mondays. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not the day. I always say it's not the day that you hate. It's the activity or the thing that you're doing on that day is what you're hating. Fucking leave Monday alone. It's got nothing to do with Monday. It's not Monday's fault that you're going to your shitty ass job or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? It's so. Um, it's what you're doing, man. And if Saturday's your day, then implement shit that you do on a Saturday or on a Monday. Like whatever it is, whatever makes you happy on a Saturday. Unless you're going out and getting fucked up, don't do that on a Monday. But what I'm saying is like you know, it's not Monday's fault that everyone hates Monday, man. Leave Monday alone. Just decide on what. Whatever you're doing on a Monday is what's bringing you down. If that's your job, then you need to kick. No, so true. Uh, keep it positive. Make sure you're implementing something for yourself when it comes to learning and 
you know, you'll enjoy it much more. So like, for me, it's been learning about building and housing and painting in different ways and making, you know, man, the room looks amazing. Uh, you know, learning new things like that. Yes, it's tiring. It's a manual labor job, but I've learned new things. It's appreciated when dad did it 20, 20 odd years ago in our house. My man had three kids, four kids, uh, uh, two jobs. He's still doing it now. Yeah, still doing it now. And he worked on the house uh, then. And he put up wallpaper on his Jager all the way up to the, the, the ceiling. You know where the stairs are? The guy. Scary is, shit, man. Pop. Yeah, man. The man with no fear. That's him, man. Try man, no me, fear. man. Like, I can't do half the shit he does. That's the one thing, though, I feel like a bit basic on as a man. And I shouldn't say this as a man because of the way shit is today. But as a man, there's this sort of responsibilities that dad did, like the handyman. You know what I mean? You could drill a hole into a wall and whatever. I can't do that shit. I can't fucking use a power no, tool. I mean, I and I'm like, am I basic or what? Nah, and it's basic. his fault too. I tell you what, it's his fault too because he never allowed me to do it. So he's like, no, 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 no. It's my house. I'll do it. So I'm like, all right, well, I've got no experience. I need to buy my own house and fuck it up. With, uh, with power tools and shit. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, he's still doing it now. Every time I speak to him, he's like, yeah, I'm just working in the house. I'm like, pups, like, chill, man. Like, anyway. Um, Listen, man, it keeps him no. active. It's his exercise. Yeah, no, exactly. And you can't tell an old school, I know that now, even with me doing this, like, he tells me to rest. Because I come home at, like, 11, 12 o'clock, straight after work, and he's like, you need to rest. And I'm like, well, you're doing it. Well, I can do it. And the quicker I do it, the better. Yeah. Hey, when you've got a mission ahead of you and there's something that you just need to take care of, like, it, it, it's one of those things that just motivates you to do it, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, and it's amazing once it's done because that feeling of just sitting down and being like, oh, it's, it's done, I did this, I, I got there. Whatever it was, all the obstacles, all the bullshit, all the hard work, I got it done, I'm cool, I'm chilling now. It's a nice feeling, man. Well, hopefully, but I won't chill. There's always work to be done, bro. Trust me. If it's not working on yourself or helping something that's going to benefit family or friends and the people close to you, uh, we've got to keep keep on that mission, bro. On that bum chair, uh-huh. as a uh, Jeremy, was it Jeremy Clarkson? I still yeah. got McDonald's donut to eat on top. <laughs> oh man, it's melting oh, shit. Man. I ate so much Burger King, I ended up throwing shit away, bro, because it was too much. What did you eat, bro? Ah, bro, because I don't eat, on the weekend, I only have literally one, well, today I said I I had two meals, but I kind of just have one meal, I fast to about, I I fast, basically, and then I start training around two, and then I finish training around 5.30, and then I go somewhere and have a big-ass meal. I do that on the weekends, right, so I literally fast the whole day, do some training, and then I go have a fat munch. Um, so I order like not just a meal, but I upsize it and I got a bunch of starters and shit. But this was it was Burger King. It was way too much. I had to throw that shit away, man. Excuse me. Nah, that's cool, man. Uh, it's cool. Uh, cool. Oh, all right, man. Massive, massive Let's, thank uh, you to everybody, man. Yeah, man. Thank you to everyone, man. For everyone listening and, and uh, listening to us talk our shit and, and give our thoughts on, on, on shit. Like I say, don't take anything personal. If I said something that you don't agree with, it's just my thoughts. And yeah, my thoughts on. don't mean shit sometimes. It's just my perspective and our perspective on things. Exactly. Uh, but exactly. it's good for you to comment, man. Give your perspective. I, I love, I, I, I'm not going to get deep into it, but I love when people give their thoughts because I'm like, I'm learning. Like, if you're against my religion, tell me why so I can learn. And I'm like, oh, that's why you don't like it. That's interesting. Let me research on that. Why is but You know, whatever it is, I'll just use that as an example. No. It's always yeah. good to learn from the opposite perspective. That's why it's good to have discussions, not arguments and fucking get heated discussions. It's good to have discussions so you can learn about why people disagree with you on certain things. So if you ever listen to anything I say and disagree, please comment because I would love to hear and understand your feedback so you know you, I can learn from it and help change my perspective possibly change my perspective on how I think about things um, but yeah cool Kibs man listen it was good to catch up bro um, yeah man no awesome peace. massive thank you again guys we'll catch you up soon one love peace one love peace